Greetings and kingdom blessings to all of you from the great city of Indianapolis, Indiana. This is Kevin Bailey. I'm with Touch of the Master Healing Ministries International. As you are coming on, please like and share the video. It's been uh, quite uh, a few weeks, uh, quite some time since I've been able to be on, be on because of <clears throat> so many other opportunities connected with ministry, yet we thank God. All right, but I want to talk to you today. Uh, about a topic that many don't understand, even within the kingdom. I want to share it with you today uh, concerning wealth, okay, and concerning those who are rich. Amen. And it and let me say this: it is nothing wrong with being rich, but it is your attitude and what you do with the wealth that you have been blessed with. Amen. Let me pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for these, your precious people that will be joining, that will be sharing this uh, video in Jesus name. And I thank you uh, for those who will impact it and, and give revelation and insight and wisdom. I bind the spirits connected with greed, spirits connected with error in Jesus name. I cancel those assignments in Jesus name. And I declare in Jesus name deliverance from spirits of greed and even the misunderstanding of wealth in Jesus' name. And I thank you and bless you and praise you for it now. It's in Jesus' name. Let the blood flow over these uh, phone lines. I bind equipment devils and distractions in Jesus' name. And I thank you and bless you and love you and praise you for it. Now, Lord, bless your people. Strengthen your people. Bring great breakthrough in their lives. And we give you praise for that. It's in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Amen. All right. So let's jump right into this. Uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, go with me to uh, the book of Luke, the book of Luke chapter 16 uh, and start at verse 19. The book of Luke chapter 16 and verse uh, 19. And I'm uh, we're going to be a few places today. Uh, to work this out. Uh, remember, wealth without contentment or godliness can be dangerous. That is the message on today. Uh, it, it can also be a snare. It can be a trap. It can be a hindrance. And remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. So I want to talk about that. And I just buy in the spirit of poverty. We're not condemning nobody who has wealth by any means. Uh, it's great, but it's how you use it and your attitude with the wealth that God has blessed you with. All of our possessions and all that we have come for God. If you're a believer or even unbeliever, all that you have comes from God. God gave you the wisdom. He gave you the ideal. And so many a times people that are within a uh, society, they have everything that the world offers. It's even hard for them to receive salvation because they think that they have arrived because they have everything that the world offers or they can buy anything and have anything that they want. But there is a eternal, eternal destiny connected with everyone in this earth for when you pass away. There is an eternal destiny. And this man that we're going to look at, uh, the rich man and Lazarus, this is not the Lazarus that Jesus told to come out of the tomb either. This is a different Lazarus. All right. Y'all stay with me. This, but listen to me, listen to me closely. Um, it's not anything wrong. Let me say it again with having wealth is how we steward over it and influence with it. Some have ignored the poor. I'm going to share the scriptures with you today. And we, we hoard, 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 and greedy, greedy, greedy. Are y'all listening to me? Listen, money is made of paper anyway. If you inhale with it, it does you no good. It's going to burn up. You, you, and your coins are, uh, will too. So listen, none of this stuff that you have that's within the world. Let me share this with you too. None of this stuff. And thank God that he gives us things to enjoy within the world. A nice home, a nice car, or whatever it is that we have in our hearts, a uh, desire. Amen. Thank God for that, that he gives us 
possessions and things for our enjoyment in the earth. But let me ask you this question. Because this rich man ended up in hell. And I'm going to share it with you and why. He ended up hell because of how he treated Lazarus. Y'all stay with me. Stay with me. Let me ask you one question today. One question. When you have a funeral, is the house and car and everything that you own put on top of the hearse to drive that body into the cemetery to be buried? Listen, that's all that's going to be there is a corpse. Your spirit is gone and your spirit is going to manifest somewhere, hell or heaven. That's a whole nother story. This uh, That's a whole nother teaching. All right. This man ended up in hell because of greed, because of lack of contentment with his gain and wealth within the earth, not because he had wealth. Are y'all there? Let's read this. If you have your Bibles, go to Luke chapter 16. Let's go to Luke chapter 16 and verse 19. Luke chapter 16, we're going to start at verse 19. We're going to be a few places today. Y'all stay with me, okay? It says, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared scrumptiously, sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to, to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off, afar off, and Lazarus in the bosom. And then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus uh, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. And so he now listen, uh, the Jesus, uh, these words are in red is talking to this man. Listen, Lazarus, these are the words of Jesus. Lazarus ends up in the bosom of Abraham. And the Bible says that he is comforted. And the, the rich man was tormented. Y'all stay with me. And again, we're not saying that there's anything wrong with being rich. Not at all. It was what he did with the resources that he had. Look what it says. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, father, that you will send him to my father's house. For you have five brothers. Uh, for I have five brothers that... He may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one rise from the dead. Amen. So listen to me closely. There is a danger with wealth. Let me look at this with wealth, without contentment or godliness. Amen. Listen, Jesus, in this particular text, he rebuked the Pharisees in this text. And the reality of this whole text is uh they considered, or the Pharisees or the religious spirits, like many today, they considered their wealth as their own righteousness or self-righteousness, or you listen to me, pride, amen, and believe that they have already arrived. But Jesus, when he's teaching this parable, he started, he startles them with the story of the diseased beggar. Now, 
Lazarus is there at his gate. This man is rich. He wouldn't even give him nothing to eat. And some of us have many a times we have ignored the needs of poor of the poor or we had resources uh, to give and we did not. And I'm going to show you when you despise the poor what happens. And when you are stingy, the Bible says that you lose everything. When you are stingy, when you are greedy. Oh, come on, I know this ain't popular. Yeah, y'all don't want to hear this. And remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of it. And this is the hardest thing uh, to get from many people is money or get them to give something of substance or resource. They love money. And it's a form of idolatry and many need to break through from 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 this bondage and believing that they have arrived. And some of you, you're out there playing the lottery, lottery and hoping uh, that at some point you get rich. But it's the love of money. It's greed. Why can't you be content with what God has given? Would you be content with those things that he has given to you? I'm not saying that you must embrace poverty, poverty and that you can't uh, be uh, have prosperity. God delights in the prosperity of his children. That could be in health. It could be in wealth, uh, uh, material blessings. Praise God for that. But it's what you do with them and how you influence with them. It's how you influence with your wealth, with your finances, with your resources. Listen to me closely. The rich man did not go to hell because of his wealth, but because he was selfish. Are y'all listening to me? And stingy. That's why he was sent to hell uh, and refuses to feed Lazarus or take care of him or take him in. Now, I'm not saying that you have to take everybody in that is poor. I think you need to use discernment, use wisdom. Amen. Uh, when you're bringing, uh, when you, God is directing you uh, through the Holy Spirit to help somebody. But, but he was hard hearted towards Lazarus. Uh, in spite of his great blessings, like many of us. So the amount of money we have is not important as the way we use it. The amount of the money that we have or wealth is not important. It's the way that we use it. Amen. I'm not saying that you can't invest. I'm not saying that you can't save. You can't purchase property and, and that it's all should be for the kingdom. But the Bible says that the poor will always be with us. Do you have the Do you help the poor? Are you stingy? Mm-hmm. Are you hard-hearted when it comes to the poor? Oh, come on now. We don't want to hear that. Some of that, some of you, listen, poverty is a, uh, a mentality, uh, a, a mentality anyway. And some of us, it needs to be broken off of our minds. It's a mindset. A demonic mentality, I mean. And it's a demonic mindset. Do you have fear of being in poverty so you don't help or give anything? Uh-oh. Are y'all there? Mm -hmm. Are y'all there? Remember, it's, it's not the amount of money that you have, but uh, it is the way we use it. And let me ask you this today. What is your attitude towards your money and possessions? Do you hoard them selfishly? Or do you use your money to help others or influence? Are y'all there? How do you use what God has given to you? All your possessions and everything you have, they come from God. And the rich man has a nerves while he is in hell. This is separated from God in a place where there's maggots, there's death, there's torment daily. There's, there's, you can't hear anything. All you see is torment daily. That's a whole nother teaching. And some that don't believe hell is real, hell is real. Don't let idolatry or selfishness or stinginess send you to hell. Can you be content in where you are now? Everybody many a times fantasize about being rich and having that all that the world offers. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 30.
Proverbs chapter 30. Let's go over there real quick. I want y'all to see something. And and what Solomon said in writing this, this proverb, Proverbs chapter 30. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 30. I believe it's in verse, uh, let me see, 6. Let's see what he had to say. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse, verse, yes, and verse 7, I'm sorry, not verse 6. He says, look what he says. Uh, in verse 7 and 8, Proverbs 30, verse 7 and 8, he says, Two things I request of you, deprive me not before I die, remove falsehood and lies from me, give me neither poverty nor riches, feed me with the food allotted to me. And look what he says in verse 9, this is Proverbs 30, verse 7 and verse 9, lest I be full and deny you and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Solomon is saying this. You see this? He said, because sometimes when we get full and we have everything uh, that, that we desire or everything God uh, that we have asked God for. Uh, when we're full and there's no problems, we have a tendency not to pray, not to read scripture, not to fast, not to worship. Solomon said, lest I be full and forget about you. Who am I talking to today? Wealth without godliness and contentment is dangerous. Let me finish this up. The rich man has a nerve to tell Lazarus. To tell Abraham to say, hey, tell Lazarus to dip his hand in some water. It's so hot. He's in hell. To cool off his tongue. So for those that don't believe hell is real, here's scriptural reference that is real. I, I, I haven't gone to the scriptures to describe what hell is like, but it is real. And listen, you have to know Jesus not only in the pardon of your sin, and you can't even say the sinner's prayer, and that's it. You actually got to live something. Or he says to you, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. So you, you have to get beyond confession, and I'm going to show you what the, the other rich ruler did in Luke chapter 18. He had everything to offer. We'll get there in just a second. Everything that the world could offer but couldn't give it up. Listen to me. If God told you to give it all, would you give it all and just follow him? In that particular text, and we're going to go over there, he guaranteed heaven. Listen, this rich man is in hell. Are y'all listening to me? It is our duty to care for the poor, um, uh, period, because uh, they'll always be with us. But guess what? Many are set in their ways. I know many don't want to hear this. Many are set in our ways because we have resources. We look down on people. We're arrogant, proud, boasting our riches. Are y'all with me? But he has the nerve to, take, to, to act like he's still in the world. You're in hell. Say, so, hey, tell Lazarus to uh, dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. It's so hot. It's so hot in there. The Bible says, for he said, I am tormented in verse 24 in this flame. But but Abraham said, remember that your lifetime you receive good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. Look what it says in here. But now he is comforted and tormented. That's in verse 25. I'm back over to Luke chapter 16 and verse 25. Y'all see this? 26, and he said, and besides all this, between you and there, the great God fixed so that those who won't pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. So guess what? Once you get in hell, ain't no passing up to Jesus or to uh, the bosom of Abraham, who is the father of our faith. Are y'all listening to me? Y'all there today? I beg you, listen what he said in verse 27. Therefore, Father, you will send him to my father's house. He had five brothers to testify them so that they don't come to the place of torment. 
He said, send them to my five brothers. He said, hey, like some of us, we had the law of Moses and the prophets. We've heard message after message, uh, uh, word after word, even those who are rich, those who are not, those who are unbelievers. You don't been exposed to truth and teaching. And when you receive this thing, many have given an easy way out. And all we teach about is grace, 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 forgiveness. Listen, there are many that are within the church that go every week that are faithful, that only go by confession, but don't live anything. And we think our possessions guarantees us a place in heaven, in the presence of God. Are y'all there? He said, if they wouldn't hear the prophets, Moses, Abraham says this, and they ain't going to be persuaded by one who rises from the dead to go tell them, listen, if you continue in your wickedness and evil ways. So it's not enough to uh, make the confession and say you believe in your heart and not live anything. Repentance is what God is after. That is a change of behavior. We have to change the behavior. Repentance. John, when he came on and said, said, hey, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Change the behavior. Turn from the behavior. Y'all catch that later. So it's not, as I said before, it's not the point that here that I'm making that if you have money, you can go to hell. Remember, it was his attitude and what was done with the resources. I'm going to go to some other scriptures in a second. Let me finish. I have a couple more points in Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, we're still over there. Luke chapter 16, all right? One other thing I want to pull out. And although what the rich person was asking was sincere, it was too late. The rich man was suffering and Lazarus was at peace. He went to the place of Sheol or Hades, which is a place where the dead dwell and the unrighteous dwell, amen? It in hell. So the image of the thirst for the experience of judgment, uh, this is uh, a place of suffering. Are y'all listening to me? Y'all there? Don't let that be your portion. We can't ignore or be arrogant or proud because God has blessed us. We must influence and help others. There is a danger in that. Some been oppressed by those who are rich as well. Let's go to the book of James. Let's go to the book of James chapter 5. James chapter 5. And verse 1. And let this spirit be judged. Let this demonic spirit be judged. James chapter 5. And let's look at verse 1. It says, come now, you rich. James 5 verse 1. Weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped the treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back, fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Savoy. This is the Lord of war. You have lived in luxury, earth in pleasure and luxury, and you have fattened your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. So listen, there's a judgment. That comes from that. Many that employ people are impressing them. They are doing work. They are lying. They are uh, they are holding back promotions from you at the workplace. Are y'all with me? They are holding back those resources. The Bible says that the cries of the people have reached the Lord of Savoy. That is the Lord of war. So let God fight for you. 
uh, from the oppression of that employer. The, and if you are an employer, don't oppress your people. Give them benefits. Uh, give them uh, raises and promotions when they're deserving of them. Don't withhold the finances. The Bible says, or promotion. But this is how the rich do. The rich have a tendency to oppress the poor. And I'm telling you that God hates it. The Bible says in verse four, the wages of the labor who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. The cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Seboeth. Y'all see this? And the Bible says that they have fattened their hearts for the day of slaughter. They have fattened their hearts. Their hearts are wicked, arrogant, bold, proud, proud. Y'all see this? This is the judgment that comes from that. Let's go to the book of Timothy chapter six. So there's nothing, first Timothy chapter six, there's nothing wrong with having resources. Let me repeat that. Or having money It's how you influence with your resources. First Timothy chapter six. And I declare a release of those finances that were that should have been released to you and promotion, amen, that they have held back from you. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, and let's look at verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 5. Let's read. Let's read. Verse 5. Unless useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. So they believe godliness is a, uh, about having wealth and possession. This is what this is talking about. Paul is talking to the believers here, and this is talking about the error and the greed. Paul exposes the greed. It says, from such, withdraw yourself. From such, withdraw yourself. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Remember, I talked to you about everybody putting your house, your car, everything you had on top of the hearse to drive you into the uh, cemetery. Listen, you can't take it with you. It says, having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. Listen, what you have Guess what? It'll be left for your family and everybody else to fight over. You can't take it with you. And if he has a mansion for you, do you want to take what you have in the earth? He's prepared a mansion with you when you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But not only that, not only do you have to believe, you have to live something. Righteous living is a key. Are y'all there? Let me finish reading. I'm at verse seven. Having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. They're saying just having food and clothing. Amen. We should be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition, which is sin. Are y'all listening to this? Y'all see this? For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Why do you think you see so many people that have everything the world offers and they are miserable and they will give anything to be happy? They're suicidal. They have all kinds of friends because they have money. The Bible is clear on that too. When you're rich. You have, you have all kinds of friends, people you don't even know when you're rich. Y'all catch that labor. Some of them ain't your friends. They just hang around because you have money. Let's go back over here to, uh, let's go back over here. Uh, let me, oh no, let me stay right here. Let me stay right here. Let's look at uh, verse 17 and Timothy uh, in writing this, uh, I mean, in Paul, they are writing this. Uh, they give instruction to the rich, to the rich, 
Listen to this in verse 17, 1 Timothy 6 and 17. Command those who are rich in the present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in the uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them, look at verse 18, let them do good that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Y'all see this? Hello. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11 and 28. Then we're going to go back over there to Luke. Proverbs chapter 11. Let's go over there. Proverbs chapter 11. Yeah, let's go over there. And then we'll go to Proverbs 28. Proverbs chapter 11. Let's look at this. Oh, wow. Stay with me. Y'all stay with me. Proverbs 11. Let me get over there. Y'all ready? Go. <laughs> ready, get set, go. Proverbs 11, 28. It says... He who trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like foliage. Y'all see this? He who trusts in his riches and not in God, the Bible says, you will fall. That ain't what I'm saying. That's what the Bible says. Amen? Let's go to Proverbs 28. Let's look at this. Proverbs 28. And verse 27. No, no, let me stay over there in Proverbs 11. Let me read this to you. Let me read this up. Some of you are going to get mad. Let me read this to you. And how generosity brings the blessing. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 24. Proverbs, let's stay back over there. Let's, let's look at verse 24. Let's go up from 28 to 24. It says, there is one who scatters yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right. Y'all see this? This is old stingy demon. See this? But it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. So when you refresh others, help others, the Bible says you will be also watered yourself or, or, or refresh yourself. Some translations said when you refresh others, you will be refreshed. Y'all see this? It says the people, look what it says. The people will curse him who withholds grain, but blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. So selling or giving resources and not being stingy. Y'all see this? Yeah, right here. Stinginess brings about poverty. Are y'all listening to me? Y'all stay with me. I know y'all don't want to hear that. Let me see. I got to the last one. Let's go to Luke chapter 18. I know y'all don't want to hear it. <laughs> Praise God. Let's go back over here to Luke. Let's go to Luke chapter 18. And this is the state of many that they are in. They obey God. Look, look, it appears though they're serving God and everything. But when he tell him, tell them to get rid of everything, how will you act when you have nothing? What will be your position? Remember, it's nothing wrong with having wealth. It's how we influence with wealth. All right. Let me look at Proverbs. Uh, let me let me look at Proverbs 28 real quick. Uh, put your thumb in the Luke chapter 28. Did we look at that? Let, let me go back over there. Let me go back over there. Let me make sure that I give that one to you, too. All right, yeah, Proverbs 28 and 27. Put your finger in Luke chapter 18. We're going to go over there in just a minute. Look what it says here in verse 27. Uh, look, verse 27, Proverbs 28 and verse 27. He who gives to the poor will not lack, but he who hides his eyes will have many curses. So when you act like they don't exist or you turn your eyes from them, you know they're poor, they're in need. I ain't saying to be foolish. Use the sermon and help who the Lord is inspiring you to help. Are y'all listening to me? The Bible says when you turn your eyes, you will have many curses. This is the word of God. Proverbs 28 and 27. Y'all see that? That's eye opening, ain't it? Let's go to Luke 18, verse 22. 
Jesus counsels uh, the young, the rich young ruler here. Jesus counsels him. Look what he says in verse 22. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have a treasure in heaven and come follow me. But when he heard this, he became very sorrowful because for he was very rich. Y'all see that? That's in Luke chapter 18 verses 22 um, through 25. Look what verse 24 says. When Jesus saw that they became very sorrowful, he said, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? For it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Of course, that's impossible. They was talking about particular fabric and different stuff like that. I won't go into that. But the Bible says here, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? Because they have all that the world effort offers and they think that they have arrived. God help us today. If you're a believer, you employ people. Or if you even work for yourself. You withhold for the poor, you're stingy. Or you have a fear of poverty. The Lord should break that yoke off of you today. Or you come from a, a family that many a times embrace poverty but you're the one that is to break it. Amen. You are the one that is to break it today. Amen. You are the one that's to destroy it. And you break it by being generous. I ain't saying give everything that you have. But generosity is what will break that curse. All right. And who is your trust in? God or in yourself or in your wealth or in your riches? There's many that are rich and have wealth that need salvation because guess what? When your time, when the time comes, there's an eternal place that you will land. And everyone that is on here that is listening to me, there's a place that all of us will go. Where are you going? Yeah. Those who have possessions that are wealth. You have done and have everything that the world offers. But the one thing that you don't have is the eternal hope that is connected with salvation through Jesus Christ. Your time is now. Whoever it is that I'm talking to that may be listening to this, even on YouTube and my subscribers. If it's you or a family member, it's time for them to come into the kingdom. And not only that, it's time for them to live something. Live and act like you save. Amen. Because when we give or refresh others, it's returned to us. And not necessarily always in money or riches. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's deliverance from something. Maybe it breaks a curse. You are the one that can change it. Uh, Psalm 49 and 6 says this. Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches. It's connected with folly. Do you trust in your wealth? Do you boast in your riches? Or do you boast in the Lord? I want to challenge you on the day. Because some, some's perspective of money... And wealth, it's not godly. And there's no contentment with many. We just fantasize about being wealthy. God destroys that yoke off of you of poverty and stinginess. He breaks it now in the name of Jesus. You that are listening, your wealth is to influence the multitudes and others. It is to influence the kingdom. It is to help practically others. This is why he has blessed you. Not for our own purposes and to be prideful. Some, God has told many of you to, re excuse me, to release something. Yeah, that's, that's going to be like, ouch, and that hurts you. Listen, the rich young ruler, when God told him to sell it all, the Bible says he became sorrowful. Is that you I'm talking to on the day? He says, sell it all and follow me. 
Would you be content with that? We, some are saying, well, you, you know, Apostle, we, we're in a pandemic. You know, some will have fear, anxiety. We're in a pandemic. There's this happening. There's that happening. Listen, us being in a pandemic doesn't mean that the word of God is not true. It doesn't alleviate the truth connected with the word of God. It's the truth. And the word of God is not based on circumstances within the world. The Bible says that the word of God is settled in heaven and shall remain forever. And listen, that rich young ruler in Luke chapter 18 and 22 through 25, we just read it. Guess what? Jesus promised that he will be in heaven. Go back and look at it. That he will go to heaven. Some need to be broken free from idolatry. Do we idolize our possessions? I don't know why you can't take them with you. Some of us need to get a new perspective about our wealth and know that it's only to be enjoyed while we're in the earth. And knowing that it comes from God is the reason why we have what we have. Stinginess will cause you to lose everything. Remember that. And I'm not telling you this for you to give me something. If you want to sow, into the ministry, go to Touch of the Master, HMI.org, if you are blessed by the ministry. If not, amen. God is a good God. All right? And he takes care of his own. He's promised to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Why would you believe he would supply all your needs? Is it determined by, did it say, uh, if, if it's a pandemic, I can't? Are y'all listening to me? Psalm 37, 19 said, even when there is a famine, Psalm 37, 19, I believe Psalm 37, 19, look what it says. Even when it's a famine, look what it says. The, the Bible says this, um, Psalm 37, 19, it says, there should not be a, there, they should not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Psalm 37, 19. Even in the days of famine, they shall not be ashamed, ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Y'all see that? So I pray today that God has broken the yoke of that mindset, that hoarding, the selfishness, being proud. If God has blessed you, you own your own business or you do well financially. And I pray that you will find resources, places that have needs or the poor, wherever it is, and that you will sow and give into those places. And even ministry that does check out ministries before you sow, that does solid work throughout the world, but that help the poor. And that are generous. Many a times we can't help everybody. But we help. Those that we can. I challenge you. To embrace generosity. All that you have. Is from God. It's not yours. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for all of these, your precious people. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would strengthen them. And I pray that what was released on today. Will bring deliverance and breakthrough. And that they have changed their perception and their concepts and their mindsets about money and about wealth. I pray that this word penetrates their hearts and that it breaks them out and breaks them through. And I declare you will break every curse of poverty, stinginess in the name of Jesus. Break now by the authority of Jesus' name. And I declare in Jesus' name, they are loose from this bondage, this fear, anxiety, worry. Loose them now in the name of Jesus. From the fear of poverty, loose them now. Because you said we should not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, we shall be satisfied. And I pray, Lord, that you minister to the hearts of those that are rich and that repentance will come. And that they are released to those who they have oppressed 
or have frauded or withhold. Even those who are listening in the from the workplace that have been frauded, that promotions have been kept for. I call for and declare a release and an open heaven over them. And that all that the devil has stolen from them, I command it to be returned seven times. And I declare that the oppressed shall go free. And that you are penetrated to with the hearts of those who are rich. It's nothing wrong with having finances because you give us the power to build wealth. But the Bible also says that we should remember the Lord. So if you have wealth, you should remember the Lord. We give you praise for it now. And we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for breakthrough. And that the Holy Spirit is releasing now. It is being released now, and along with the anointing, to break every yoke of bondage in the lives of your people. And we give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless all of you. I hope you were encouraged by the message on today. Uh, we thank God for all of you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you to all of you for joining us. And I pray that you will bless by what was released on today and that God has inspired you. Share this with your friends. Share it with your family. I believe that they'll be blessed by it. Until then, shalom and have a great day.